Hello and welcome to my van conversion video. My name is Anna, I'm 18, and I'm currently living in a 1997 Chevy Gladiator van. I have been for almost two weeks now, I think. I bought this van for $5,000 in May with the goal to convert it for under $5,000, so all together with the cost of the van, under $10,000. And so I spent two to three months converting it and then I set out on my road trip on August 15th, 2018. I do have some things to say before I get actually into the build. Um, so if you want to skip to a certain part or just the beginning, then you can go to the times on the screen. So I converted this van when I was 17 slash 18 years old. And I did it mainly by myself, but I did have some help from my parents, um, a relative and somebody that my mom knew who helped me with the electrical stuff and pretty much did all of that for me while I just watched and took notes. But the reason that I wanted to film all of this is because I wanted to show people that you do not have to be a 30 year old male who is a carpenter and an electrician and all that stuff to build a van. And that doesn't mean that my van is the most spectacular build ever. There are certainly many flaws in it. It's not easy at all to convert a van, but it is definitely more possible than you think. And I had basically no experience in any of this kind of stuff before going into it. I pretty much only knew how to like use a saw and a drill and that's about it. I watched a ton of van build videos before starting the conversion myself and that's where I learned how to do all this stuff from but the problem is that so many people out there who are doing this are way more experienced and therefore some things just seem more obvious to them and they don't explain anything at all it seems like. And that makes it kind of hard but I tried to make this build as easy to understand as possible like this is totally for noobs so if you're more experienced with this kind of stuff i might seem like i'm saying extremely obvious things at points but just because it's obvious to you doesn't mean it's obvious to everybody else and the van build video is i think it's detailed enough that you can actually kind of see what i'm doing but it's more for a visual i have a page on my website called my van build where you can read extremely detailed step-by-step -step instructions for how I did literally everything. The video kind of just shows and the website really explains. So I highly recommend checking both out. On my website I also have information about buying a van, preparing for the build, and products that I use like the fridge and my solar panels and all that kind of stuff is listed on there and I have an about page for my travels and then a travel plans page. I'll also link videos in the description that I made about me trying to find a van and a van tour once it's up and tearing everything out of my van. So if you watch this video and then go over to the more detailed explanation on the van build and you still have questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram or email me. Both of those are in the description. I would love to help as best as I can, but keep in mind I'm not an expert on any of these things. And also if I say anything that is incorrect or like very bad advice, especially regarding electrical stuff, please let me know so that I can put some kind of disclaimer either in a pinned comment or in the description or both so that I can let other people know not to do something that I did. And so you should also definitely check out either the description or a pinned comment before watching this and following any advice I give to make sure that none of it is detrimental. And so lastly, this video does go pretty fast and so you may need to pause occasionally to read things, but um, hopefully it's kind of easy to understand and see what I'm doing for the most part. So that is it and let's get into the build. Okay, unfortunately for the first part, um, the installation of the fan, I don't have the footage for it because it somehow got corrupted and so I literally have like the first four seconds of it and that's all. So I don't have any footage to show for this. Luckily the fan is not a hard part to do despite the fact that it's one of the first things you do and you have to cut a hole in the roof and that's kind of a daunting thing. It's really not that hard and I do have again a page on my website which goes into an in-depth explanation of how to do that. And the videos that I've seen other people do on installing a fan are pretty easy to understand. So sorry about that, but yeah, I don't have the footage for that. So now we can finally get into the build.
right, so this part of the build, I'm gonna have to explain to you a little bit differently because I didn't do really any of it. I had somebody help me with pretty much all of it and I just washed and took notes. So I have a lot of notes written down, so I'm gonna try to explain as best as I can in a very, hopefully easy for beginners to understand way. Now, I personally recommend having somebody either do this completely for you or at least having somebody who has some knowledge on electrical solar stuff help you out with it because this stuff can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And if you are gonna do it alone or even if you're having someone help you, it's so important to read all of the instructions and the manuals that come with it because there are a lot of safety things that you need to be aware of when you're handling this kind of stuff. So the first thing that we did was we screwed the charge controller and the inverter into place. And you also wanna make sure that your battery is secure on pretty much every side so that it doesn't go anywhere. So mine, as you can see, on that side, that side, and that side, it's pretty much not going anywhere. So I just put a little two by four piece here, nailed it in. And the battery that I have is an AGM Deep Cycle 125 amp hour battery. The charge controller that I have came with the panels that I got. It's a 30 amp, I believe. And then this is a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. The next step was cutting the wires that go from the battery into the charge controller, the positive and the negative. This side is where the battery wires go. This side is where the solar panel wires go. And these wires came with the panels and charge controller kit that I purchased. So one end there's like a metal circle with a hole in the middle and the other end is just a regular wire and so cut it to the right length and then leave extra room. You know you don't want it to be super tight and then cut off the plastic at the end about a half an inch. Twist the end of the wire, unscrew this with a screwdriver, put those in, and then re-screw it. And all you need to do at this point is put them into here. You don't have to put them onto the battery yet because you'll just do that once you have all the wires ready. And so then after that, the same thing you can do for the inverter, which again, these wires I believe come with the inverter. And so these ones have circles on both ends. And so just unscrew these caps, put the wire on, re-screw them, and then leave these unattached from the battery terminals until later. The next thing we did was screwed in this ground block just to the wheel box. And then we unscrewed these two terminals here and we also unscrewed the two battery terminals and so then you just want to take a wire I do not know what gauge this is but you want to put little circle ends on both of them so some wires you might get with the panels or the inverter might come with the circle ends already on them um, but you can also purchase these as just little ends and you can crimp them on so for this wire you want to put one on each end this for most terminals, I believe will be a very small circle and this will be a bigger circle. And then once this is on there, you just re-screw that back in. And so then the two things that I was going to be wiring back here are the lights and the fan. And so the fan has two wires, which both of them were wired back here. And one of them, the negative, put a little circle end on there and it went on there. And then for the light, what I did wrong, but this is the right way to do it, you want to wire the positive to the light switch, which is right there for me. And the negative you want to wire back here. And then for my light switch, I also had a ground wire, which you don't have to know what that means. It's just an extra wire that goes on there. So there's two fan wires coming back here and one wire from the lights going there and one wire from the lights going here and then two wires from the switch going here. And so we put small circles on the end of the ground from the switch the negative from the switch and the negative from the fan and put them all onto that terminal. And then of course, screw this back in once you have all three of them on. Now the fantastic fan comes with the fuse built in, but the lights did not. So we had to cut the wire, take off the plastic ends about a half an inch and twist them and then put them into this fuse holder and put a 7.5 amp fuse in it. In most of the builds I've seen, people will either have a fuse panel, fuse box, or they'll put fuses in between like the controller and the battery, the battery and the inverter. And I think, you know, from the research I've done, that's probably the most safe way to go. So that's what I'd recommend doing, but the person who helped me do this didn't do that, so. Once you kind of have all your wires cut to length, you can start by putting the two wires from the inverter onto the battery. Always make sure positive is going to positive, negative is going to negative. You can put the wires from the charge controller to the battery onto the terminals, and then the two fan and light wires onto there. Make sure they're all secured down. And then lastly, you want to cover your solar panels so that no energy is coming into them, and then put 
the wires from the panels that come down from the panels here into the charge controller the same way that you put the battery wires in. Then remember to re-screw these in, not too tight though, but just tight enough so that they don't come out. And then what you'll want to do is make sure that this light matches what kind of battery you have. So it's hard to tell, but it's actually faintly orange because the battery I use is gel. Don't know what any of those mean, but they're sealed, gelled, and flooded types of batteries, and so you want to press this button to make sure that this light is either green, orange, or red, depending on what kind of battery you have. So then to kind of recap all the wires, on the positive terminal of the battery, we have a wire going into the inverter. We have this wire, which goes into the charge controller. We have the positive from the fan, and we have the positive for the lights. On the negative end, we have the wire going into the inverter the wire going to the ground block, and the wire going into the charge controller. From the charge controller, we have the two going to the battery and the two coming from the solar panels. On the ground block, we have the wire going to the negative terminal of the battery, and we have the negative from the fan, the ground from the light switch, and the negative from the light switch. So this is the finished product. This is what the ceiling looks like. 
and the walls are not perfect it's kind of hard to tell on camera but there are some flaws here and there back there it's kind of rough here is the finished kitchen and my fridge over there got my shelf back there my water jugs ton of stuff just kind of shoved in there my sink and faucet which leaks which is great here is my bed and the little cabinets that I made for it this is the flooring got a nice little rug for it but that's what it looks like all finished and then here in the back I really didn't try to make this look pretty at all here are the door panels and all my window covers so my original goal was to try to spend under ten thousand dollars on the entire thing including the price of the van and since I bought the van for five thousand dollars I wanted to spend under five thousand dollars on the entire conversion and everything that I would need like pots and pans and repairs and all that kind of stuff so I kept track of every penny I spent along the way and I divided all of my costs up into two different sections one for the conversion and one for things that weren't necessarily part of the conversion but were things that I bought for the van so part of that extra category would be things like taxes, title, license registrations, um, a repair that I had to get on my brake lines, I think, things like a USB fan, a solar shower, kitchen related items, national parks pass, a backpack, all that kind of stuff is extra, but I wouldn't have purchased it if I wasn't going to be living in the van, so that's why I included it in there. And all of that stuff added up to... $1,812.07 and then all the stuff for the build which is like the flooring, the stuff for the walls, the ceiling, the lights, the fan, the fridge, the sink, the solar stuff, all of that added up to $2,953.14 so those put together would be $4,765.21 so then all together plus the $5,000 for the van my total cost was $9,765.21 so I miraculously stayed under budget. I will be making a video in the future once I've been in the van for a month talking about my first month expenses, how much I spend in that amount of time, and then also talking about how much and how I saved up money for all of this so that's pretty much all i have to say if you have any questions again feel free to dm me on instagram or email me but first check out my website page and if your question isn't answered there then definitely message me i'd love to help as best as i can but like i said i'm not an expert on any of this so yeah thanks for watching